Hi, my name is Tony Shockey with the Flute Corporation. I'm a key account manager for the United States and also a level 3 thermographer. Today we're going to talk about a new RSE camera as well as an articulating form factor style thermal image camera. Alright, so let's take a look at the setup of our camera today. We're using an RSE 600. This is a research science and engineering camera. On the back here we've got a couple of connection points. We've got our communication to our PC or our laptop and then we've got power here. The communication goes in through a RJ45 connector into your uh, Ethernet hub of your computer and it's going to transmit the data from the camera then over into your PC in real time. You notice there's not a display on this camera. It's really made for this kind of an application where you have uh, something, uh, whether it's material or a printed circuit board, that you really want to analyze and you want to be able to see it on a nice large screen like a computer. So what I have here is I have a Raspberry Pi all powered up for us today and I'm going to go ahead and slide that underneath the imager here and we're going to take a look and see what we see. Now if I would have done my due diligence I would have taken a baseline image of what this looks like in good work in order and I would have gone ahead then and used that as a comparison to find out if we're actually in good work in order with this one here today. So as we look at many of the small components on the board here we should be able to determine what's going on with this and if there are some sort of issues. All right, so some of the things you're going to be doing when you look at a printed circuit board is you're going to be looking at the different components that are on the board. Now, some of the important things on here are the ICs, the resistors, the traces, making sure that there's no additional heat on here uh, to show some sort of an issue. If there is, then that kind of gives you a starting point for the contact measurements that you're going to take. Now, as I look at my screen here, I'm showing that I do have definitely a warm area here. My my uh, large IC here is definitely giving off a fair amount of heat. Now, is that the right amount or, the, or, or not? Is it off? I don't know because I don't have a baseline yet for this. However, if I have a baseline, now I know exactly what I'm looking at and if I do have some delta. One of the other things you'll notice about my setup as well is the camera is also not perpendicular to the application. If you are exactly perpendicular to the application, you could actually get some of the radiated energy off of the chip inside of the RSE camera down here and reflected back, giving you errors, inaccuracies, and potentially false positives. So we want to steer clear of that. So really what I'm looking for here is I want to make sure that my contact measurements are aligned with the test. I know that they're set for test one, we'll say and then I'll go ahead and look at the heat dissipation based on the specifications from the manufacturer for the chip and the other components and then do a comparison with the infrared information that I'm taking from that. Alright, so now as we look at what we're going to do as we go through uh, setup and walkthrough of a printed circuit board, we want to make sure that we understand what's going on with the printed circuit board. Ideally we have some sort of a starting point, right? We talk about having a baseline image of what good looks like with this Raspberry Pi, for example. Um, if I don't have one, I can establish one right now. So I've got the camera set up looking down at the application. You can see it on the computer monitor and we can see there's definitely a couple of areas where they're much warmer than others. One of those happens to be on this IC right here. Well, looking at the specs, the temperature on that should be elevated and it looks like it matches the specifications from the manufacturer. So it looks like we're in good work in order. So now I'm going to take a look at some of the other areas around there and see if there's anything that really jumps out at me to determine that, hey, there may be another place where I want to start taking some contact measurements to verify that my voltage, my current, my frequency is all good and we've got a good working board. If we do, I'm going to use this as my baseline image going forward and then I can compare everything else to this down the road. All right, so what we've done now is we've set the camera up, we're looking at the application and now we want to do a little bit of a, an analyze here. We want to figure out what's going wrong and if it's working properly, great. But let's go ahead and, and view what we're seeing here. So uh, right now what I'm seeing is the hot cursor here is showing me a hot point on one of the uh, circuits. And the rest of the board, I can see really good information on here as far as the traces are concerned, the other components. I've got a couple of areas where they may be a little bit warmer than not. Uh, but I'm in focus, I can tell, uh, because I've uh, uh, come over here and focused with my focal bar. Um, and then I've measured it to the, uh, the camera. Now I can also move the camera on the stand to get me into focus or another way to focus like we had talked about before is getting a multi-sharp image. Now that's going to take anywhere from 
uh, maybe a dozen up to 60 images, all in the matter of a split second, compressing them all together and giving us one in-focus view of everything in the screen here. That can really help increase the accuracy of the temperature measurements, as well as give us just one image of everything that we're looking at. Another thing we can do here is we can change the palette. So let's say, for example, you've got a color deficiency. Well, maybe I can't see some of the, the reds or the greens or the blues. Well, I can change it to a more traditional scale, which would be a grayscale or even an inverted grayscale. These, these have been commonly used in uh, infrared for decades. And so people typically that have used this in the past are more comfortable with this, uh, this style of palette. One of the other things that can be done here is you can actually go into Analyze, and you can put, put pointers up here, markers. You can mark specific areas, and as you mark that, you'll notice that there is now a marker to go along with that, and now you're trending over time. And if that temperature were to jump up, it would show you that graphically. If I'd like, I can add some areas of interest, and in those areas of interest, I can get some data, and that data would give me uh, min, max, and average temperature on each one of those markers. And then they're all signified by a particular color as well. So there's a lot of information that's available to you here um, just by going in and optimizing, analyzing some of the data that you're looking at on this in-focus image. All right, so let's say that we want to do an audio and video record of what we're looking at. We can do both of those here. So we can do a number of things in the software to get the data out from the camera onto our hard drive or our local drive. So for example, if I wanted to capture a still image, we call those IS2s. That's the proprietary file format that a infrared image comes in. What that means is that means that everything in the field of view right here is going to be captured. And that means every temperature measurement data on this particular camera we have 640 by 480 uh, resolution. And what that means is that's just over 307,000 pixels or 307,000 different temperature measurement data points. We can then go ahead and, and plot points on here or areas of interest, and then we can capture them either in an image or we can do an auto capture at a particular time when something's gone above a, a particular threshold, temperature-wise or time-wise, or we can do a video recording. And you can do one of two styles for video recording. You can do one, a radiometric video record, which is then basically a number of still images taken together um, creating the video look. Or you can actually create an AVI video, which is an older format of uh, just a standard video, like you would take with maybe an iPhone or something like that. Now, the radiometric video format allows you to then pluck out individual time and date stamp images out of the video so that you can do further, further analysis on the software itself and then create uh, some form of a report that tells you exactly what's going on with that particular image or maybe where there's a problem uh, with that particular image over a certain time period. So when it comes to emissivity, a lot of people don't understand the emissivity on different components. And, and the reality is, is that different components on the board have different emissivity values. That just means they emit their radiant energy at different levels, which means that the camera then picks up the radiant energy and converts it to a temperature. If it's not radiating much, much energy, it's going to appear as though it's not as hot as it really is. So in order to amend that, we can amend that with the surface or we can make a change in the emissivity on either a single point, an area of interest, or the entire screen uh, using the feature over here in the optimized section uh, on, the, uh, on the software. So all that being said, we can get higher accuracy for temperature measurement if we do one of two things. Correct the emissivity where we can and amend the surfaces on the very shining reflective surfaces that are uh, on the PCB or application itself. All right, so as we go to analyze, there's a number of things that we can do here in the software. So for example, I'm gonna place a point or two on the screen and you'll see immediately on the trend line here, you're actually looking at graphically what's going on with those uh, different areas. We can also trend a line and you can see how that changes over time and you can do areas of interest. You can do as many points as you'd like on here. What you can do with that data is you can come down to the full data table down here, pull this up, and it's actually going to grab <clears throat> the hot points, the cold points, the center points, the markers, and you can export this data down into a CSV file or into Excel, 
and look at the temperature over time data. You can then check or highlight the ones that you want or don't want and then look at all that data. You can actually grab all that information out of a video and get every frame or every piece of information from every point on there so that you can drop that down and have that data for further analysis. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a macro lens. Macro lens has uh, these fingers here. They're going to go in and it's going to be basically a quarter turn, a little less than that. Put it on the camera there and now I'm ready to go. So now I'm going to put the Raspberry Pi underneath the camera, underneath the macro lens, and we're going to look at some traces as well as some small components. So now we can see the traces on the board. If we wanted to see if we could identify a trace that wasn't working properly or had a defect, we'd be able to see that. We can also see some of the components that are on the back side. If there's any kind of an issue with a solder joint or something like that uh, on the other side. Right now I don't see anything out of the ordinary, but you can see a lot of components around here. And you can actually read some things with this, whereas earlier I think I told you guys you couldn't read anything in infrared. Well, there's a slight difference in temperature between where the letters are and the numbers and the rest of the board, which helps us understand where exactly on the board we are and also shows you the thermal sensitivity of the camera. All right, so let's talk about some of the do's and don'ts. So it's important that we understand the emissivity properties. We've gone through that a little bit. But on some of the components here, you can definitely see that you've got some very shiny reflective areas. And on the components down below, you can see those as well. So if we want to accurately measure those, we need to make sure to amend that surface. When we're done amending that surface, then we're going to get some pretty good and actual use usable data. Some of the other things that we want to do um, uh, here is we want to make sure that we, we warm the board up from zero state to stabilization. When we get to stabilization, the board should continue to run that way as is uh, for the length of the, the time that it's going to be on. And if we understand what that baseline looks like, we now understand uh, if we have a good and working board, if we've got some sort of a defect, and we can then actually see where that might be. Another area here to, to avoid maybe all these pins there's a lot of shiny reflective things going on here, but we can also use the inside of these pins as what we call a cavity radiator to increase the temperature accuracy on a board. Now, on this particular board, it's, there's no real heat sink. I'm not going to worry about that too much, but a heat sink is a great place to grab some good accurate temperature. The other thing I'm going to do is once I've found the location on the board of interest, and I want to do a deeper dive, that's when I'm going to go ahead and add the macro lens to the camera and be able to really get down to that 25 microns per pixel and really see what's going on, whether it's a component issue, whether it's a solder joint issue, um, whether it is a nick in a, or a defect in a trace, you're going to be able to see that kind of detail with the macro lens. So all in all, you want to try and avoid, make sure you've got uh, emissivity issues under, under control. You're, you're setting yourself up for success by having this powered up and stabilized, and then you're grabbing some good uh, data there based on that to give you that baseline. So as we talk about some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to looking at uh, printed circuit boards, this one in particular here today, or the, the one that you're working on in your facility, they're very similar. They have a lot of similarities. They've got some components, uh, such as the uh, ICs. Uh, that have the ability to give us good temperature accuracy as they are, but then we have some areas here where we've got resistors and capacitors and, and metallic surroundings that make it very difficult for us to grab good and accurate temperature. So we need to make sure to amend those. We talked about how emissivity um, needs to be changed in order for us to increase the accuracy so we can use some of those um, paints or uh, materials to amend that surface to increase the accuracy. Some of the other things we can use are multi-sharp, the, the multi, multiple uh, depths of field with different uh, uh, locations on the board all coming into focus at one time. That's a huge adder for you. Only takes one image to get everything in that image and to get good accuracy because it's going to give you that uh, in-focus accuracy. Uh, super resolution on here, if you're looking to increase the accuracy for some of the incredibly small components on here, 
put it into super resolution mode and it's going to increase the accuracy four times. So basically give you four times the resolution that the imager currently shows in the infrared mode. All that being said, um, some of the things to look out for once again, making sure that your camera is not directly at a 90 degree angle uh, or perpendicular to the application because you'll get some backscatter basically from the, uh, the lens and on into the components in the camera bouncing back and, and getting some false positives. So uh, there's a lot of things to look out for when you're, when you're taking measurements on here, but really just make sure you've got a good baseline, you're amending the emissivity issues, and you're doing the, uh, the application uh, with the same location each and every time. We'll give you that apples to apples comparison. All right, and what I have here is an articulating form factor style camera. So a little different than the RSE camera that we were showing earlier. It has the ability to articulate as well as it has on the bottom of this, it has the ability to mount that on a stand as well, just the same as we did with the RSE camera. Now, one of the advantages that you're gonna have for this camera over what you would have with the RSE is you actually have the display on the back. And the display means that you can pick this up and you can take it anywhere with you and go ahead and do some uh, inspection, uh, maybe on the production line, maybe in another part of the plant, or maybe another department can actually use the imager uh, to look for uh, inherent problems uh, in maintenance or other areas. Now, for this camera, uh, I like to use this in areas where I have above and below grade applications because I can go ahead and stand in one area, still have line of sight, but be able to get good view on what's going on there. And then when I'm done with that, um, I can go ahead then and uh, capture some images and or video right on screen. So if I'd like to, I can pull the trigger on here and capture an image. And then I can actually work with that image right here on screen as opposed to having to pull it into uh, my PC at this point. All right, so some of the advantages or disadvantages of the different style of cameras. So I brought two with me today. We saw the RSE camera. So it sits on a stand most of the time. Doesn't give you the ability to move it around very often. This camera gives you the flexibility, not just of the camera itself, but of the ability to, to pick it up and take it out to another application and be able to use it throughout your entire facility, not just one location. So it, it's very nice in the fact that uh, it's portable as well as it basically has the software built right into it. So it's touchscreen as well as I can use the buttons to go ahead and go through whatever I need to do. So from pulling an image, stilling that image, and then going ahead and editing it before I then process the image to store it, I can do all that on the screen. Whereas the RSE camera, I have to then go back into the software, make sure it's connected to the computer to do all that kind of work. All right, so this is what I would do uh, if I was gonna take some images at my facility on a particular printed circuit board. I'm gonna go ahead and focus it. So there's a manual focus wheel on the front. And I can get that in focus or I can guarantee that I'm in focus. I'll take it out, I'm gonna use my laser sharp. Go ahead and pull the green trigger or double tap the screen and it will now still the image. Now we have the option to save it, edit, or cancel at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and edit. So in the edit mode, we can add things like uh, IR photo notes. IR photo notes turns the camera into a digital camera and allows us to take up to five digital images. That can be great in giving additional information, such as maybe you want a screenshot of your, um, your waveform from your scope meter or your digital multimeter. You can add that information in here and then go back into edit. You can add up to 60 seconds worth of audio annotation. That means I can go ahead and say, hey, at this test I ran uh, the voltage at 12.6 volts and the current at 3.8 amps and my frequency is at 60 hertz. That can all be added in here to give you good value into the information you're collecting about this application. I can then go into the measurements and let's say, for example, I wanted to get some markers real quick. I can actually drag and drop those markers into different areas on the application to show me the difference in temperature between different areas. Now that can be valuable because you can do a, a real-time analysis before you then send this off to somebody else. I can select done or back. I can also add a spot box on here. So if I wanted to add a box, I can go ahead and add that box down here and I can change the size of that box to give me the min, max, and average inside that area of interest to tell me if I'm within the specification that I'm trying to accomplish. So as we go back in there, I'll turn those off real quick. And then we'll go back in and see other things we can do. Spot temperature here, I can put on the hottest uh, temperature marker here on the screen. 
And then some of the other things I can do on here, I can go into the image and I can actually change the way we view this in the palette before we save this. So if I want to change into maybe a grayscale or an inverted grayscale beforehand, I could change that or into a blue-red, whatever I'd like, to, to give me the best view for this particular image. I can also add, uh, change and put IR Fusion on there. That's a blend between the visual light and the, and the infrared image. And I can also set a color alarm. So a color alarm is actually going to allow me to set a, a, a temperature. And if the, uh, anything on that image goes above or below that color alarm, I can go ahead and then be flagged that there's something that has gone into alarm. Uh, we can also add a distance here from your target. And then, of course, you can add text. So once you're done with all of that, you can hit the Save button. And now you've added all that extra rich data in there to go along with the temperature measurement data to give you one, one complete solution here. All right, so in conclusion here, just talking about some of the things that we're able to do today in the R&D world that we weren't able to do just five years ago was the ability to, to ensure that the accuracy of the measurements we were getting was much more simplified with the uh, technology. Uh, the innovation of laser sharp autofocus, being able to actually focus to the distance based on the distance meter built into the camera ensures that we've got the highest accuracy possible when it comes to these kind of applications. And then the, the ability to use multi-sharp where we're taking up to 60 images at a time, compressing them all together, giving us one application shot as opposed to multiple, saves a lot of time and effort in, in what you're trying to achieve from an R&D or a PCB perspective these days. So. Just thanks again for watching, and hopefully you learned something today.